going on, people? Welcome back to Carefree Lewis G. Welcome back to yet another preview building up to Arsenal versus Chelsea. The first away day of the season. You guys' first home game of the season, of course, the man to my right needs no introduction. The big man himself, Don Robbie. What are you telling me, bro? How have you been? Yeah, not great, bro. <laughs> not great. After our first game, um, it, it wasn't great. Mm. It, was a, it was quite a poor performance against Brentford. And hoping that we can bounce back against, uh, against you guys. It'll be a tough game, but... It'll be typical for you guys, wouldn't we, it? We, we, when we played you last year, mm. I remember last season when we played you at the Emirates, it was more doom and gloom than even what it was now. We, we were dreadful. We were on a terrible run. There's a lot of people, I think, even at the time saying that lose the game, Mikko Arteta could be gone. Mm. And we actually put in a really good performance that day. So I'm hoping that we can see something the same. It's our first home game. So first game in front of fans, you know, properly. I, I, I really want to see Arsenal put in a big performance. Yeah, I think for you guys, you just need anything that could give you guys a bit of confidence going mm. into the season. Because I can't lie, I have... All the times I've spent watching football, I have never seen the Arsenal fan base look so depressed going into a season. Literally never. Like you always mm. have something to like fall back on and to give you guys a bit of confidence or a bit of hope going into the season. This year I haven't seen nothing. I've just seen Arsenal fans saying, Do we want the season to start? How long before the season ends? That they ain't looking forward to the season. And first off, we get one of the reasons why in terms of managing Mikel Arteta, but in terms of your window. How do you rate the summer transfer window? And if you're annoyed by it, like, what's been the most annoying part of it? Because obviously there's been, there has <coughs> been money spent. It's a bit questionable whether they've been spent on the right players or everything. But I can see Mikel Arteta as well trying to create a younger team, a sort of project for the future. It's just a question of, is he the guy to carry that team for the future? And do the players even believe in him at this point? Well, is that if he's the right guy? Well, um, the jury's still out. You know, I mean... You've got a team that's finished eighth two seasons in a row. That's not good enough for a team mm. like Arsenal. Simple as that. It's, it's horrendous, right? So the jury's out on him, but he's going to get a chance, you know? Um, and he has to turn it around this season. When I'm looking at the signings, it's a really, it's a really weird conundrum for me because when I look at the signings, they're all sensible signings. They're very sensible signings. They're all... They're all in positions what we need. He, he's done a lot of things with the signings that over the years we haven't done. Mm. So he's addressed things. So we needed a goalkeeper to um, provide competition for Leno. He's gone and done that. He's gone and brought in a good goalkeeper who's going to provide competition. Do you think he's the we, right goalkeeper? I think, you know what, I, my, my beef with Ramsdale when I first sort of, he was being touted as being coming in is that when I heard the fees of 35, 40 million mm. being spoken about, I said, are, are we going crazy? He's not worth nowhere near that. But if I really look on it and I look how Arsenal have got about it, they went in, they said, we will take him for this amount. Sheffield United said, no, we want 35 million. Arsenal just said, all right, you know what, keep him. We're walking away from the whole deal. It's actually Ramsdale has forced the move now because he was so desperate. So the way they've done it has been pretty smart business. Mm. And we've ended up getting it for around about 24 million. Uh, so for 24 million, a keeper that's broken into the England setup, I think that's, you know, I think that's not a bad price. He's an English keeper as well. You know you're going to pay a bit more, mm. right? And he's young. So <clears throat> intelligent signing. Ben White, very highly um, thought of. You know, it was a bit of a surprise signing for me, but I get it. You know, we needed, you know, David Luiz has gone. We needed a defender who could come in who's good at ball playing defender. He is that. Mm. So that makes sense. Sambi Lokonga, we needed a defensive midfielder. He is a defensive midfielder. It's not the he's one we be wanted. He's a young one as well, too. Yeah, yeah, he's only 21. He's not what we, we wanted, Basuma or somebody like that. But who's to say he's not, he can't turn out to be the next Basuma or better? Because did we know who Basuma was before he came into Brighton? And mm. this guy is highly rated, you know, I mean, he's, he's just getting into the Belgium team, you know, Vincent Company, all these guys rate him really highly. He was the captain of Anderlecht at only 21. Mm. Smart signing. Odegaard, I, that was one signing that I was like, when, when the season finished, even before the transfer window started, I was like, we've got to get him back. I, I liked him. <clears throat> I think he's a very, very good player. 
that's going to get better. I see. So he that. impressed you in the six months. He impressed me in the six months. He did. I, I can't lie. I think the jury's from what I've seen on Arsenal fans have been a bit. Well, out I don't know what they've been watching. For for me, I was impressed with him when he came into the team. He brought creativity. He's excellent on the press, and again, he's he's a captain of Norway at 22. So again, I see a over player. Harland as well. Yeah, I see a player for the future. I see a player that's going to get better, especially now that he's got a home for what he does. And Nuno Tavares, we brought in, you know, we had Tierney, but Tierney, love Tierney, but he's always injured, right? He always gets little niggles and that. He's come in as the backup to Tierney, and from what I've seen of him, I've liked what I've seen. Mm. So the signings all make sense. The only thing is, none of those signings get you really, it's almost like they're all too sensible. If you know, which is a exciting. weird thing to say, but there's nothing there that really excites you. You guys are signing Lukaku, you're like, I can't wait. You know, maybe you think, you know, if you dug deep down into the signing, mm. you could be saying, well, what, what kind of stupidness is that? You know, I mean, you had him before, you've had to bring him back 100 million, but you're not looking at that. You're completely excited because you're forgetting about the price because you know he's an outstanding striker and what he's going to bring. Mm. We've not really signed a player like that, and that's why. I think if Arsenal, before the end of the transfer window, got one really exciting signing in, we could look back and say, it's a great window. So the window's been quite good, and we spent £129 million so far, mm -hmm. which again, for a team that I've seen this club sign only pet a cheque at the end of a transfer window and things like that. So that's good as well. So it's, it's, it should be positive, but it hasn't been because still the performances haven't been good. And this is where Mikel Arteta has to start turning things around, has to start getting this team playing in a certain way. It probably is going to take time because there's a lot of young players in there. Mm. But he ain't going to get much time. That's the problem. You know I mean, he's not going to get much time. So signings have chance been... he won't last the season? <laughs> if, this is a result business. If I, when me and you were talking... Um, last season, you probably would have said there's no way they'd sack... Well, maybe not no way, because it's Roman Abramovich. But you didn't see the sacking of Lampard coming, even after he'd have a, a few defeats, did you? But he um, was still... So this is a results business, man. Mm. And even though, you know, the owners of um, Arsenal will give him a lot of chances, mm. he's, you know, the fans are back now. They want to start seeing Arsenal performing. We all watched from afar last year and saw Arsenal finish in eighth place, saw us lose some really poor games. We're going to be there now, and we're not going to want to see that. So the pressure really is on, on Mikel Arteta, and he's got to start turning things around. And he's got to start turning things around soon. And it's a really pressurised game going into it against Chelsea. And I mean, everyone's expecting Chelsea to slap us up, you know, and quite rightly so. When you look at Chelsea's team, you know, they're champions of Europe, we've got to, you know, much as I hate to say it, but listen, they, they, to they, my ears, I can't lie. they did it on merit. They, they, they deserve to win it. And um, they've got a very good manager in Tuchel, and they've got very, very good players. Um, so it's a massive test for Mikel Arteta, and that's why people are a bit depressed. Because I think the main part of depression for Arsenal fans is that the team hasn't been exciting in the way it's played. Mm. And we haven't seen no excitement for quite a long time around the general play of the team. So that, again is something that we've got to we've got to improve. Yeah, but I, I remember I was talking on the one of the Don Robbie shows a few weeks ago and you had Arsenal down as dark horse for top four mainly based on the fact that they had no European football. I didn't say was it top four I said? He said dark horse for I top four. I think I'd had a couple to drink then. <laughs> I can't lie, I thought it was a bit wild but well, I was it top the, six? I'm sure it was top Actually, four. it might it have been. Top it might have video, been. It? So I said I, I don't know if I had them down as dark horses to get top four, but I said Listen, yeah, actually, you're right. I, I, didn't, I said they could sneak a top four mm. only based off the fact that they only have one game a week. Yeah, and I still and think with you guys, even with the season that you guys are having now, that hasn't come into effect yet. So there could still be the potential that yeah. you guys, in terms of once we get to September, October, especially December and the Christmas period, you guys could have the fitness game on lock compared to all your other competitors. It's going to be an advantage because over the years, you know, Arsenal have not had a good enough squad to cope with European games midweek. So there's been a lot of games that 
we've lost and mm. we've done poorly in, where I felt it's because of the, you know, when they've rotated, those players that are coming, you're like, oh, God, not him. You know what I mean? And I think this time around, we're not going to have to do loads of rotation. You know? I, I want to see Arsenal just going with their strongest team every single game. Every single game. We've got a game next week against West Brom in the, uh, in the League Cup. For me, I don't want to see many players being rested. I know we've got Man City at the weekend, but I don't, it's the start of the season. I want to go with a very, very strong team, and I want Arsenal to do that. After, after the League, you know, if League Cup is League Cup, but basically, once European football starts, we haven't got it. So, week to week, we should be strong, and we should be ready to go, and we should be able to keep a settled team throughout the season. Shouldn't be chopping and changing. So, it should be an advantage to Arsenal, but the other teams are strengthened very well and um, it's going to be difficult. But it should be an advantage to Arsenal. Yeah, I'm expecting that to come round as well midway through the season. That's why I'm not saying too much on Arteta yeah, and I mean, Arsenal. Yeah, you just, and, yeah. and you make a good point. You can't judge the whole season based off of the start. Man City started poorly last year mm. and they won the league at a canter. I'm not saying we, we're not going to win the league, but I'm just saying we could improve as the season goes along. You know what I mean? It's not... It's not everybody who starts off winning their first game or, you know, getting a couple wins that, you know, it's, that's, it's a long season. Season runs till, you know, the, the famous saying, isn't it? Where are you in May? You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do hear that. That's why we've got such a long season ahead. Mm. And I'm, again, I can't say too much about Arsenal because I say too much shit and we lose. It happens every single time. So we'll go into score predictions. Mm. Uh, what's your score prediction for this game, bro? Um, <sighs> If, if it weren't for the fact that we was, you know, I should be just saying that we're going to lose because Chelsea are a better team than Arsenal right now. Um, that's the fact, especially with the players we've got missing. You know what I mean? No, no Lacazette. He's out with COVID. Bamiang, will he be? He's coming back from COVID. Will he be fit? I don't know. Um, no Thomas Partey, no Gabriel. Those are four of the best players in that team, all mm. missing. Um... However, <laughs> it's, I don't know what it is, man. Every time we played Chelsea recently and everyone's given us no chance, we've done all right. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go for a draw. I don't think we'll win the game, but we're at home. I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw. I think those players have got a point to prove. Oh, another 2-2. After two last the week, they're really, you know, they, they're not stupid. They would have seen the criticism left, right and centre. Well, actually, I know they've seen the criticism. I know for a fact. I spoke to a player the other day. I know they've seen the criticism. So they're going to want to do better. So <clears throat> expect a team that's going to really come out and give everything. Um, but Chelsea are strong. Lukaku's starting. I'll go 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. Two, two. All right, cool. Well, guys, if you guys want to leave your score predictions down in the comment section below, let us know what you think the scoreline is going to be on Sunday between Arsenal and Chelsea. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G as well if you guys haven't done so already. We're getting very close to 25k, so every one of you guys that subscribes count. So guys, check out the channel down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys very soon. Up the shells.